A dark, derelict space station with cramped, claustrophobic hallways, flickering lights, gratuitous violence, lots of gore, and a stomp to die for. The Callisto Protocol took everything that made Dead Space great and turned it up to 11. Instead of an engineer, you're now a pilot who got wrongfully imprisoned shortly before a weird monster mutation outbreak caused everyone within the prison to violently riot, destroying everything and brutally kill each other. Well, and now you have to escape this nightmare. Instead of a rig everyone wears casually over their clothes that displays their health, you've had a core implanted into your neck that functions not only as a health display for anyone walking closely behind you, but also as a tracking and communication device. They could have gone a bit further with this and had it be the method to diegetically present you with hints and button prompts and the like, kinda like they did in Dead Space, where everything you as a player were presented with did actually exist within the game world as well. But well, this game gives you on-screen prompts even before you have any kind of display or projector or implant to explain their existence. Often the game just outright pauses and pulls up a tutorial screen. It doesn't really hurt the game, but compared to Dead Space, it's a lot less immersive. So now you have to escape this monster-infested prison, conserve health and ammunition, and uncover a dark conspiracy through not only playing the story, but also finding a bunch of audio logs of the people who formerly lived and worked in this facility. Unsurprisingly, there are a lot of parallels between Dead Space and Callisto Protocol, but there are also some staunch differences. The most obvious is this game's approach to enemy encounters. While there are ranged weapons in the game and even a new iteration of Dead Space's kinetic module to grab faraway objects and even enemies and throw them, well, wherever you want, the main focus in this game's enemy encounters is this brutal melee combat that's always right in your face as you have to get really close to all these monsters to ferociously beat them into submission. The combat is not too hard when it comes to its execution, but really punishing when you mess up. Enemies can take quite a beating and hit hard. Dodging or blocking is just a matter of walking either backwards or to the side when the enemy attacks, no actual timing required, but it's not always easy to anticipate how often an enemy will attack before it briefly pauses and your own attacks have quite a long wind-up and you can't cancel out of the animation. Also, enemies can hit you through your attack animation even if you hit them at the same time. They can't interrupt you, but neither can you interrupt them. And they appear in countless numbers over the course of the game, but healing items are few and far between. In theory, at least. There are, in fact, two different types of healing in this game. Health injectors that you can find and use from your inventory to heal up when you're ready for it. And then there are instant health pickups you mostly find on enemy corpses that heal a small amount of health immediately and are wasted if picked up while you are at full health. And since there's some RNG involved in discovering these, there's always a bit of a gamble involved. You wanna heal up before the next fight or try killing the next monster without getting hit and maybe get some extra health out of it without wasting some precious health injectors. And there's always the danger of getting ambushed by another monster after defeating the first. But in this game, the monsters do have a code of honor and don't just stab you in the back. No, they actually make you aware of their presence. They give you a leg up and just gently turn you around before they start fighting you for real. You, on the other hand, are able to stab them in the back because this game, like pretty much every action game these days, has a simple binary sneaking system. Press a button to crouch down and avoid standing directly in front of enemies and you're effectively invisible. That is, 
as long as enemies aren't in approach you no matter what mode. And if you sneak up on an unsuspecting enemy, you can execute them instantly. Which, to be fair, is highly appreciated. It's not that this game becomes a hide and seek simulator. You now just have sometimes the opportunity to get rid of an enemy more quickly. You once again have to desecrate your enemy's corpses to find health, ammo and valuables that you need to buy and upgrade equipment. And while the stomp feels once again really good and extremely satisfying, it behaves a bit weird at times. Some corpses aren't really stompable. This seems to be the case with bodies used in a cutscene. And a good number of physics objects also don't mind your stomp. They can be pushed around, but they aren't affected in the least by your stomp attack. Not really sure why. There are also, of course, countless moments where you have to execute a quick time event or hammer on a button to shake off an enemy, open a door or push something out of the way. Stuff like that. And those don't feel too good. Now I don't mind me some good QTEs. They have been overused in some games or were just badly designed at times, but if done well, they can enhance the experience. Kinda like they did in Dead Space. In this game they feel a bit off. You sometimes have to mash a button before your character does anything on screen or the timing of the animation is off. I feel like nothing would have been lost if these moments were just cutscenes without player input. There are some instances where you actually have to shake off an enemy and in these tense moments it doesn't feel as bad, but I also wouldn't call it good in those moments. One of the greatest features of Dead Space is sadly absent in this game. There is no map screen and no navigation system in this game, at least not up until where I am now in the game. Same as its spiritual predecessors, this game has you explore a lot and gives you a large number of smaller side areas to roam around in. But when it comes down to it, it is quite linear and you can't just walk back to earlier areas. Sometimes a cutscene just starts unexpectedly that closes a door permanently behind you or transports you to a new location. So any resources and collectibles you haven't picked up are lost for the rest of this playthrough. I never needed Dead Space's navigation system to know where to go, but to know where not to go, to not miss out on an opportunity to explore a certain area. In this game, I feel like I'm just aimlessly stumbling around the place, finding my way only by accident. And I often run back and forth an area because I'm never really sure whether I'm heading towards a point of no return or an optional area. And maybe this accurately simulates the protagonist's state of mind. But it really hurts the sense of exploration, at least for me. Dead Space nailed this, so it's sad to see this game fail in that regard. And yeah, this kinda encompasses all my criticisms of this game. Everything it took from Dead Space is refined and made into something grander or tighter or more polished. But all of Dead Space elements it didn't take with it, well, their absence is really noticeable. This just goes to show how well made Dead Space really was. But yeah, as for the things this game does really well, the combat is more visceral, oh the irony, and you can't rely on your guns as much. The cramped environments look stunning and are so incredibly detailed. The sound design is amazing and can be really haunting when the game doesn't try to jump scare you. And they really went all out with all the flickering lights and unstable light sources. From what I've come to know, in Dead Space the devs tried to not have a single stable light source in the game to always keep the player nervous and on edge. And they have outdone themselves with this game. The world building is a mixed bag. They tried to build up a new universe and I do believe that a lot of care went into all the characters and backstories and into the lore. As of now I don't really get it, but I'm sure it will make sense in due time. But 
Why are there credit chips and contraband items lying around inside the solitary confinement cells? This prison isn't that big on human rights. So why do the prisoners have personal belongings or even money inside their cells? Maybe inside the normal cells so that they can buy stuff from the prison's vending machines. But why in solitary confinement? Maybe I'm nitpicking, but again, Dead Space nailed this stuff. Now, I haven't gotten too far into the game as of now. I've played for a few hours, but I really took my time exploring and just looking at all the great environments and stuff. And of course, I spent a good amount of time just dying over and over again against basic enemies in sometimes more and sometimes less entertaining ways. And there are some quite gruesome ways to die in here. And yeah, I have heard of the additional death animations as part of the season pass. The devs say that all these additional animations haven't been created yet and if that is true then I don't see a problem with adding them later with the season pass. It's just a bit weird to advertise something like that. This would have generated more goodwill if it had been just a cherry on top of a good story expansion for people to just discover. But what do I know? Well, I know that I really like this game. I like its approach to the combat, I really love the atmosphere, the sound, the dark corridors only slightly illuminated by flickering lights. Exploration could be a tiny bit more satisfying, but maybe I just have to play a bit more for it to happen. So far I think this is a great follow up to Dead Space, arguably better than Dead Space 3. And if you enjoyed Viserys horror trilogy, then I'm sure you'll get a kick out of this one. As long as you don't expect subtle horror, you're good, because even though the game has more subtle moments, most of the time it's pretty in your face with the horror and the violence and the gore and all that good stuff. So yeah, it's great. Go play it.